Good morning. At this time, please welcome Jackson Ryan Haga, SCA President for the Pledge of Allegiance, and please remain standing for the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. On behalf of Galax City Public Schools, Superintendent Mr. Bill Sturgill, Assistant Superintendent Ms. Rebecca Cardwell, School Board Chairman Mr. Ray Cole, Vice Chairman Dr. Jim Adams, Ms. Helen Kyle, Ms. Melissa Petty, Mr. Larry Spangler, Galax City Council, City Manager Mr. Keith Barker, Mayor Mitchell, Vice Mayor Green, Delegate Israel O'Quinn, and the faculty and staff of Galax High School, I'd like to welcome each of you to Galax High School's 2018 graduation commencement ceremony. At this time, we're going to make a change in today's program. We'll be making accommodations for our five well-deserving boys soccer seniors who have been looking forward to walking across the stage at graduation as well as playing in another state championship game. I'd like to thank our superintendent, Mr. Bill Sturgill, and the Galax School Board in working with the Virginia High School League to negotiate this accommodation so our students can participate in both walking across the stage at graduation and playing in another state final. At this time, would our five senior soccer players please rise and report to the stage. Jason Bowtree. Paul Dew. Applause 
Javier Nicolas Gomez Montanaz. Uriel Lopez. Ricardo Miguel Osuna. By the power vested in me by the Galax City School Board and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I, announce, I now pronounce you five graduates of Galax High School with all the rights and privileges therein. You may move your tassels. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you five of our graduates of the class of 2018. Please, as they exit the graduation ceremony, join us in a round of applause for their accomplishments and good luck in bringing back another state title to Galax. Class of 2018, I'm honored to be standing before you this beautiful morning, thankful that the weatherman cooperated as we celebrate the final chapter in your high school career and look forward to the start of the rest of your life. Seniors, in front of you are your parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, educators, counselors, pastors, and friends, all of whom have played an integral role in helping you reach this milestone. Each one has spent the last 13 years making sure each of you have made it to school every day, mostly on time, shown up with the proper materials, assisted with science projects, chaperoned field trips, and hopefully had not had to sit with you in the principal's office too many times. They have traveled many miles to watch you participate in athletic events, act, sing, dance, cheer, compete, or play an instrument. They have supported each of you along the way, every step, every trial, and every success. Graduating class of 2018, at this time, please help me recognize these individuals with your applause. <clears throat> class of 2018, your high school career has encompassed many activities and many successes. Your presence in our hallways, classrooms, on the court, field, and stage, and in our community has benefited all that has been part of Galax High School and the Galax community during this time. We have all enjoyed seeing your gifts and talents throughout the years. Feel confident that you have left Galax High School in this community in a better place than when you started. Galax High School football. Led by six seniors, the football team this season advanced to the state semifinals. These seniors finished their career with a school record of 41 total wins, including three state semifinal appearances and one state championship. Each player played a significant role, including two seniors who earned first team all conference, first team all region, and first team all state. In addition, one senior was named the state player of the year. Each of you will certainly be missed. Girls cross country was MED district runner up, region C runner up, and finished seventh overall in the state meet. Girls varsity team was led by five seniors. The girls team had three runners named to the all MED team and two runners named to the all region C team. One runner was named to the 2017 VHSL all state team. Boys varsity finished third in the MED district and placed third in the region. The boys team was led by three seniors. One runner was named to the all MED team and one runner was named to the all region C team. Two individuals qualified for the state championships. Golf was led by two senior ladies that helped the golf team place third at the region championship. Both senior ladies qualified for and played in the Virginia High School League Girls State Open. 
their leadership will be missed. Volleyball advanced through the conference tournament into the region tournament. One senior was selected for first team all district. Two players were selected for second team all district and two players received honorable mention. One senior was selected for first team all region C and one player was selected for second team all region. One senior also reached over a thousand career digs. Two senior captains will graduate and their leadership on and off the court will be missed. The varsity cheerleading squad, which is comprised of four seniors from this graduating class, had a very busy and exciting football season getting to cheer on the football team. The cheer members and sponsors are to be commended for all of their dedication in supporting our teams. Competition cheerleading also had a successful season with four competing seniors. They had a strong showing at the Graham Cheer Invitational, taking third place in the small varsity division, earning them a spot in region competition. The competition cheer members and sponsors are committed for all of their dedication in supporting our teams. The girls basketball team had a very successful season with an overall record of 22 and five. They finished the season at the Mountain Empire District regular season and tournament champs, region C runner up and made it to the state quarterfinals. They were led by two seniors who were first team all district and second team all region. They both will be missed. Boys finished fourth in the district and advanced to region play. They were led by three seniors, with one being named second team all district. Wrestling turned in another great season and was filled with many accomplishments. They had their first group of six young ladies join the team and competed very well in co-ed wrestling. The season was capped off by having six wrestlers finish in the top eight in the Virginia High School League cha state championships. We also had our second three-time state champion. They were led by one senior. The swim team had an awesome season this year, being represented by six seniors. For the girls team, the senior captain was the women's 100-yard backstroke champion at the Class 2C Region Championship and went on to place fifth at the 2A state meet. For the boys team, the senior captain was the men's 50-yard freestyle and 100-yard freestyle champion at the Class 2C Region Championship and went on to place eighth in both events at the 2A Virginia State Meet. Two other senior girls were part of the women's 200 freestyle relay that took 16th place, helping the team achieve a 22nd place finish in the state. Two other guy seniors helped the men's 200-yard melody relay post a 14th place finish, helping the team earn a 16th place finish in the state meet. They will all be missed. Our MAC teams were led by four seniors, making substantial contributions throughout this season and their career. Scholastic Bowl was led by three seniors and finished as Mountain Empire District runner-up. Forensics, two GH seniors participated in forensics this year. Both received medals and advanced from Region C to Super Regions. One placed as alternate for the state competition. Eleven seniors participated in the Virginia High School League Theater Festival this year. With a second place finish at the combined regional tournament, Galax advanced to the Super Regional Tournament and placed fourth with a superior ranking. Two senior actors received Best Actor awards at the combined regional competition. One senior also received Outstanding Actor recognition at the Super Regional Theater Festival. The Maroon Tide Band had a very successful year. During their first competition at the Music in the Castle Band Festival, they placed second in drum major and auxiliaries at the Music in the Castle Band Festival, placed first in drum major, music, and general effect, and second place percussion and marching at the George Wythe Band Festival, and also achieved first place in Class 3A as well as a superior rating. For their final competition at the Cougar Classic, the band placed first in drum major and second in color guard, music, marching, and general effect. The People's Choice Award, as well as second place in class 2A and an excellent rating. At the state concert assessment, the band received straight superior ratings on the stage and sight reading for an overall rating of superior, which has not been achieved in more than 15 years. This year's band also traveled to Disney World where they marched in the Magic Kingdom as the lead band for the morning parade. They have worked extremely hard and we are very proud of all their accomplishments and we will greatly miss the 16 seniors that helped attribute to this band's success. Chorus were led by three seniors and one senior participated in the spring musical production of Greece. 
FBLA had 22 members, nine of which were seniors. 18 members competed at the regional level with nine senior members earning awards and five moved on to compete at the state leadership conference in Reston, Virginia. Three seniors placed fourth in the state and earned the opportunity to compete at the national leadership conference. Their leadership and commitment will truly be missed. Baseball were district runner-up, region champions, and played in the state quarterfinal. They were led by four seniors, making substantial contributions. Two seniors were named All-District, and one senior was named District Player of the Year and Region Player of the Year. Softball were district tournament runner-up and advanced to region play. They were led by four seniors who provided leadership day in and day out. Three seniors were named All-District, two seniors were named First Team All-Region, and one senior was named Second Team All-Region. These girls will truly be missed. The varsity boys and girls track teams were led by three seniors who qualified for the regional championships in six events. The girls track team finished with two on the all-district team, one on the all-region team, and one top 15 finish in a 3,200 meter run at Virginia High School League State Championship track meet. The boys track team finished with five on the all-district team, four on the all-region team, and one top 15 finish in the four by 100 meter relay at the Virginia High School State Championship track meet. Boys tennis were district and region champions advancing to state play. They were led by three seniors who provided leadership throughout their career. One senior advanced in both singles and doubles to the state semifinals. They will truly be missed. Girls were led by one senior who provided leadership day in and day out throughout her four year career. Her leadership will be missed. Girls soccer finished second in the district and lost in the first round of 1A-2A region tournament. Ten players were named to the all-district team, including two seniors. They will truly be missed. Boys soccer were led by six seniors. One senior was named district and region player of the year. They were district champions, region runner-up, and are playing in the state finals today at 11 a.m. this morning at Radford University. We were privileged to have 11 eager seniors who chose to complete, complete a senior project this year. All the projects had a focus on bettering their community and ranged from serving and collecting food for the local soup kitchen to serving in Haiti on a mission trip. Two seniors raised money for our local Department of Social Services for foster children while others collected coats, shoes, and other items to be given than those in need. Academically. This senior class has performed at high levels throughout all of their five years at Galax High School. Out of 79 seniors, 34 are honor graduates, which include two valid Victorians and three salutatorians. Six seniors attended the Southwest Virginia Governor School. The total number of standard diplomas awarded today will be 38. The total number of advanced studies diplomas awarded today will be 40. The total number of applied studies diplomas awarded today will be one. 26 of our seniors qualified as early college scholars. Seniors were awarded $80,300 Tuesday night from the Galax Foundation for Excellence. In addition to that amount awarded by the foundation, seniors were awarded through other various donors and colleges $206,804 to assist them in continuing with their education. Please help me give a big thank you to our Galax Foundation for Excellence and other donors for making this possible for our seniors. <laughs> Class of 2018, think about all of those experiences, both good and bad, your challenges and your accomplishments, both inside and outside the classroom. Throughout your life, look at these experiences and especially the people who have helped you along the way. They will bring you guidance in knowing that anything is possible through hard work and perseverance. I have the greatest confidence in each of you that your chances for continued success in your future endeavors are great. It has been a privilege and a pleasure to serve each of you throughout our time together. Good luck and roll tight.
Ladies and gentlemen, in the class of 2018, I'm very excited this morning to be able to introduce Galax High School alumni as our graduation speaker, Mr. Derek A. Early. Mr. Early is the Deputy Regional Commissioner for the National Capital Region Federal Acquisition Service within the General Services Administration. Currently, Mr. Early oversees GSA's largest regional federal acquisition service operation with a client base of approximately 800,000 users, supported by assisted acquisition services, contracting operating division, and personal property management business lines, along with business development and policy support offices of customer accounts and stakeholder engagement, and the acquisition oversight division. Say that five times fast. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Prior to being the Deputy Regional Commissioner, Mr. Early served as the Director of Office of Assisted List Acquisition Services within the NCR. Previously, Mr. Early was the Chief for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Contracts within the Office of Acquisition Management, Contracts and Grants for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Mr. Early is also an adjunct professor at the UMUC in the Business Management Department. He has taught several courses at the university on both general and federal contract management. Mr. Early is a, currently a member of the board of directors for the Tran Ron Center 
nonprofit organization focusing on support to families of inner city gun violence. In his education career path, graduating Galax High School in 1994, while at GHS, Mr. Early was the chairman of Mac History, was involved with band, football, and got most of his education in the principal's office. <laughs> that was confirmed this morning talking to your father. <laughs> After high school, Mr. Early went on to play football at Ferrum College and finished his college studies at, in 1999 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Political Science from East Tennessee State University. Mr. Early went on to obtain his Master's of Public Management degree from ETSU in 2001 and in 2006 a Graduate Certificate in Business Leadership from John Hopkins University. Throughout his career, he has also received several awards and acknowledgments which include 2003 HHS Special Act Award, Office of Competitive Sourcing. 2006 HHS Secretary's Distinguished Service Award, Project BioShield. 2010 Recognition Letter for Exceptional Work from Assistant Secretary. 2013 HHS Secretary's Distinguished Service Award, Next Generation Anthrax Vaccine Procurement. And in 2014, the GSA FAS Commissioner Award for Department of Labor Procurement. Please, at this time, help me give a big Galax welcome to one of our own and today's graduation speaker, Mr. Derek A. Early. You can't do that. That's impossible. You're not smart enough, fast enough, or good enough. I don't even know why I'm standing up here today. <laughs> get angry, get upset, get passionate, feel something, then do something. Take the negativity and let it fuel you into success. Do not let it stop you. You're entering adulthood and the world doesn't care about your feelings. It cares about what you have to offer. Now these words may seem harsh, but I wanted to prepare you for the strength tenacity and confidence that it's going to take to be successful in life. Had to catch your attention real quick. Faculty, parents, friends, and especially graduates, thank you for such a warm welcome this morning. I'd like to begin by saying how humbled I am to be invited to speak here today. You know, it's truly an honor. You know, it's one thing to speak at events where nobody knows you, you may never see them again, but it's more than an honor to speak in my hometown. Galax Pride, Maroon Top Pride forever. And I'd like to give a special shout out to the Galax High School class of 1994. 24 years, and boy, does time fly. But I like to think that we wear age pretty well. <laughs> Graduates, you are the next generation, and we're counting on you. We need you, even if you don't know it yet. You're the next inventors in science, technology, the next president, the next state, world, local leaders. Society is going to label you many things. I think right now it's Generation Z, it's the I generation, post-millennials. But I do know one thing, you are our next beginning. But it's going to take work, courage, durability, nerve. And it may take a little luck, but I find the harder that I work, the more luck that I seem to have. The seeds, the seeds you are planting today will impact your future ability to eat. The seeds, say that one more time. The seeds you are planting today will impact your future ability to eat. Many people may not know this. Well, after the uh, pre-reception, many people may not know, but I wasn't a superstar student, and I have a ton of excuses why. But I did have an inextinguishable passion, a fiery drive, and a belief that I can't be stopped at whatever it is I want to do. So let me tell you a little bit about my story because it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Now, according to my dearest mother, you know, I had three career aspirations growing up. One, to be a race car driver. Two, to wear a suit and work on Capitol Hill. And three, to give her a nervous breakdown through my disruptive behavior in school. Like, when I try to fire a teacher in the sixth grade, and all you middle schoolers out there, out there don't try this next year in the sixth grade. So I know you're asking, how did I try to fire a teacher in the sixth grade? Well, I asked her if her salary was paid for by taxes. She said yes. I then asked, do we all pay taxes? She said yes. So I said, since, we, 
since we pay taxes and your salary is paid for by taxes, then you're fired. <laughs> now, needless to say, that didn't end very well, and Mr. Irola just said I spent the majority of my time in the principal's office. But I was given the in-school suspension, but you can see that I like being in charge from a very early age, and, I, and I'll call that the seed of leadership. <laughs> as, I, as I was saying, I was just barely a good enough student in high school to get into college, but I did get in. Eventually, I chose Farham College, and I know that we have a couple folks going to Farham, wanted to play football, wanted to play golf, always go Panthers. Transferred to East Tennessee State, and this is where one of the first seeds I planted reaped fruit. Got to my senior year of college. Dr. Corso called me to his office. He asked me, what was I going to do with the rest of my life when I graduated? So I shrugged my shoulders as high as I can, and I said, I don't know. Because we all think of graduations like high school and college as endings. When in reality, commencement means to begin. Graduations are new beginnings. They're seeds planted. So Dr. Corso wanted to know what was I going to do. I didn't have an answer. I wasn't a top college student either. And like many of you, I didn't have any rich family members to give me a job. I didn't do any big internships at big corporations during the summer. I had to work over the summer, just like most poor kids. I was at Food City, I was at Roses, and I also worked at Ingalls. I had no connections to get a job other than Food City, Roses, and Ingalls. <laughs> so Dr. Corso gave me the number to the graduate school dean I called the dean, and he told me to apply to grad school. I told him, one, I didn't have the grades, and two, I didn't have the money to go to grad school. He said if I got in, that he would get me money to go. Well, I got accepted, and he came through with the money. The seed planted with Dr. Corso led to a harvest that's still reaping fruit to this day. So I graduated, eventually got the job at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and I haven't looked back. And remember those three career aspirations? One, to be a race car driver. Two, to work on Capitol Hill and wear a suit every day. And three, to give my mom a nervous breakdown. Well, I already told you the story about giving my mom a nervous breakdown. But here's how I actually made it to Capitol Hill. While at HHS, so the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, I was on a politically visible program, and I was summoned to Capitol Hill to brief two congressional committees. Now, it wasn't the easiest or my fondest memory, but I did fulfill that childhood dream of wearing a suit and working on Capitol Hill. So, as you can tell, my journey's been a bumpy process with many hurdles, and you're going to face even bigger hurdles. But use them as your motivation. Enjoy life and strike a balance between work and play. Your generation has a lot of work, and we need your strength, passion, and fearlessness. Because many times, you're going to be told that you can't do something. It's going to come from people that know nothing about you. It's going to come from strangers on the street. But it's also going to come from family and people you respect and love. So when this happens, realize, although they're probably just looking out for you, they're really saying that you can't do something because they're judging your capabilities from today and saying that you can't do something because they can't do it themselves. So you must realize that who you demonstrated up until today will have little to do with who you are one year from today, five years from today, 10 years from today. You can fail your whole life and turn it all around by next year. As for people saying that you can't do something because they can't do it themselves, realize this, they ain't you. Your determination alone will help you overcome the limitations that they were never able to. So when that time comes, when you've achieved that goal that you set out to get, you will help those around you too realize that it's also possible for them. The day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit, and once you have the fruit, teach others to plant seeds as well. I also want you to plant seeds of national unity and humanity by listening. Engage people with different views than your own. Share your perspective, but also listen. Listen with kindness in your heart, not anger. Because if, if we listen to each other, if we treat each other with respect, we can find ways to overcome our national modern day problems together. I, I want us all to plant seeds of respect for humankind. Any of you can be successful. You must decide to be successful. Do not waste another day hoping for something better. On my way out, I want to do a little demonstration. Graduates, 
Yeah, I'm talking to you graduates. Raise your right hand as high as you can. Raise your right hand as high as you can. Now raise it higher. See, see, that's not good enough. When given an opportunity, do your best the first time. There may not be a second time or another bite at the apple. Graduates, raise your hand, right hand as high as you can. Exactly. Today you've been given a seed. Plant it and do everything you can to make it grow. I look forward to seeing your garden. Thank you again for the honor of speaking with you today. It's truly been a pleasure and I wish you much success. It's my honor to introduce our senior class president and one of the salutatorians, William Todd Patton. Wisdom. We are hopefully leaving Galax High School wiser than we entered. I've spent the majority of my life with most of the people present here. From teachers, students, and family members, I will always remember my life at Galax High School. This place will forever have a spot in my memories. During high school, we have learned such things as how to analyze novels, balance equations, and determine the volume of a curved shape. These skills have helped us to make it to graduation, and now it is time to apply knowledge imparted to us and move into the real world. But not all of the information learned here has been about core or elective subjects. We have also been taught life lessons. Seeds of wisdom have been planted. Even though I could spend all day explaining how each teacher here has his or her own life lesson focuses that have meant much to me, I won't. These robes are hot, and if I have to stand here much longer, I might burst into flames. However, I would like to share a few of my favorites. Mr. Dustin Carter once stated, dig deep down and find what little maturity you have left and use it. If you can't find any, borrow some. As we walk across this stage and take our diplomas, we accept all the privileges and pitfalls of adulthood. The phone company will not call, be calling our parents to remind us of upcoming payments. We are responsible. We will be able to vote, choose our country's leaders, and even be called to serve our country in a time of war. The time for digging deep is upon us. We are ready. Another great man, Mr. Jared Wilson, said, being miserable builds character. We are stepping out into this world to achieve our own goals. However, not every aspect of achieving those goals will be fun or action-packed. Taking the good with the bad and persevering will be important. Of course, Mr. Wilson also told us never to fry bacon without a shirt on. <laughs> Might I add, this is great advice. The quote caused us to laugh, but we know he was teaching us to temper knowledge with common sense too. Knowing that there will be good days and bad days and that thinking before acting are vital truths. I have also learned values through the great words of Mark Dixon who said, Son, if you help ball side, that kid will hit 9,000 threes. He also said, My bad, your fault. These two quotes touch on fundamentals of life. I urge all my classmates to take their roles in other people's lives seriously. We need to be there, they need to be there for us, and we need to be there for others. We also need to take responsibilities for our own mistakes and learn from them. Failure is just a chance to do it better the next time. Failure is always an option. Do not be insulted or embarrassed by it. Grow from it. Finally, I would like, on behalf of myself and my class, to thank all the faculty and family members here for teaching and nurturing us. We have been provided with the foundation to be successful members of society. For my fellow classmates of 2018, I leave you with this last piece of advice. When times get tough, just act like somebody. And I know Coach Brown's not here, but he's in all of our hearts, so I figured I should end this speech the way he would. Where, Doc? Please welcome two more of our salutatorians, Savannah Catherine Lumpkin and James Christian Parks. Wonder. Every day of elementary school we spent wondering. Wondering how the little seeds roots in the styrofoam cup always go down and the plant always goes up even though no one really knows how or why, they just do. Wondering exactly how they got that milk into the little bags or how the ice cream was always shaped like a hot dog and how it always tasted so perfect. Each day there was always something new. We had new people to meet, new friends to make, new questions to ask, and new words to read. 
words that could always take us on a journey to a new destination. A destination where the mouse always got the cookie and the little old lady always ate the spider. As we grew older, we could travel further and further with Jack and Annie and their magic tree house. We could even go on our own adventures to the library to find our next adventure. But not all of our adventures happen in our little desks or even in the hallways decorated with our art projects. The ones in the hallway covered in 100 macaroni noodles for the 100th day of school or paper plate pumpkins for Halloween. Some adventures we took outside in the playground for field day where we could show just how strong we were playing tug of war or at the pumpkin patch searching for the perfect pumpkin to take home to our moms and dads. While other days we used our imagination, those days were our favorites. They were the days that we could leave on our pajamas for the whole day and pretend we were just like the kids from the Polar, Polar Express with hot chocolate in our laps and slippers on our feet. Through every adventure, we would make new relationships with our classmates and our teachers. The teachers that would forever change our lives with the words that others were afraid to tell us. They were the people that we could tell anything to when we were afraid to tell someone else the friendships we made with our classmates that we would spend 12 years with and would help mold us into the people that we are today. All these moments and people helped to form us for the early years of our lives. They gave us our roots, but not all days were happy or easy. Some days were difficult, like the day that we left our moms and dads for the first time, or those days that we didn't get the smiley face in our folder sent home like we wanted. The days when we learned that breaking the rules did have consequences and what we said to our friends did matter. We, just like the plants that were in our styrofoam cups, were starting our growth up. Everything during our growth mattered. Everything still matters. Every action or decision, every choice one makes can affect how he or she is five minutes, five hours, five years from this very moment. The small lessons that we learned in elementary school did make a difference in our lives. Lessons like sharing, playing fair, thinking before acting, and saying sorry when we did something wrong or are important. Remember these because not only did they affect us then, but they affect us today and in the future. They are what keep us firmly grounded and they still help us reach new heights we are meant to reach. Change. Entering middle school brought about change. Middle school is where we leave behind the comfort that we'd come to know since kindergarten. We had to switch out recess and fun for homework and acne. No longer could we spend all day with our single teacher that felt more like a parent. Now we had to shift between different instructors every hour and juggle different class environments all day long. And because of this drastic change in our day-to-day -day life, we had to adjust. And to me, that's what middle school is all about. It's that awkward time in between the highlights, the phase that everyone wants to forget. But it's so much more important than it gets credit for. Middle school is where we begin to shape who we are. We stopped being small copies of our parents and started to think for ourselves, even in most of the time we thought wrong. We tried to be different, tried to be our own people, and ironically, we're often trying to be something that wasn't truly ourselves. Friendships ended and new ones replaced them. We said things we shouldn't have, did things we shouldn't have, and had to face the consequences. But these weren't all bad things. Of course, it hurts to look at pictures of ourselves from sixth grade, and nobody wants to see the embarrassing things they did when they were 12 but we learned from them. We learned how to handle lots of classes, how to handle stress, and most importantly, how to handle an entire new world of emotions. Whether it was during games of prison break dodgeball, just say no picnics, or time spent just in between classes, every day had a new lesson to be learned, and little did we know, it was all just preparing us for the next chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your valid Victorians, William Douglas Brannock and Eleanor Rose Ozer. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would first like to thank my parents, grandparents, friends, teachers, and administrators for the immeasurable impact they've had on me. I couldn't have made it to this stage in my life without your guidance and compassion. Next, a few words to my fellow classmates draped in Marin this morning. Thanks for being the amazing people that you are and for all the amazing things that you would do. In addition, I promise not to inundate you with as many sci-fi and comic book references as I would like to. 
As you might have surmised by now, I'm going to reminisce on our time in high school together. Truth be told, I'm probably not the best person to do this, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Growth. High school was a period of intense personal growth. With the awkward years of middle school behind us, we walked into the doors of GHS's eighth graders. Once again, we found ourselves at the bottom of the pecking order. Nonetheless, we were exhilarated to be there. However, that was not really high school. I'm going to skip ahead to our freshman year. As wide-eyed freshmen, we stood at the base of an astonishing, yet somewhat psychotic, mountain of opportunities. For the first time, we were in control of the classes we wanted to take and the kind of activities we wanted to do. We could join sports teams, be in marching band, act in theater, learn a new skill, or compete in academic competitions. As we absorbed ourselves in our newfound interests, time began to slip away from us. Before long, we were studying for our first finals and saying goodbye to our friends for the summer. Eventually, August came again. We returned as sophomores, ever so slightly higher up in the social hierarchy. We laughed at the freshmen and eighth graders struggling to adjust to high school life despite just being in their shoes a few short months ago. Watching Mr. Fant react to the latest teenage slang and his subsequent ridicule was always a highlight of the day. Some of us even got a chance to play for the long-coveted football state championship. It was an archetypal game of Gaylax football, really. I run it up, we got defensive slugfest. I was far too anxious to watch the last play, if I'm completely honest, but when I heard the rest of the band scream, I knew they'd done it. Summer soon arrived, and with it, another set of temporary goodbyes. When we next saw August, we were juniors. Upperclassmen at last, we began to play a bigger role and even started to lead others. Many of us devoted thousands of hours into the things we cared about. Academics became harder than it ever had before, and it pushed us past what we thought ourselves capable of. We watched as the world around us became more divided and chaotic than ever. Nevertheless, we persevered. Summer returned, and it was time for another set of goodbyes. In the blink of an eye, August arrived again. It was finally time to run the last leg of our marathon. Senior year is a lot more stressful than I think a lot of people realize. Between senior pictures, family commitments, part-time jobs, and college applications, it became quite overwhelming. But at least we didn't have to park in the junior lot. <sighs> These last few weeks have uh, zoomed by. Between prom, trips, and just spending time with one another, we've created memories that we will have for the rest of our lives. Now it is time once again to say goodbye. Not forever, just a little longer than we're used to. Try to remember the many lessons we have learned here together over the past four years. Take it from a wise Jedi from a galaxy far, far away. Mind what you have learned, save you it can. Thank you. Good morning. Six months ago, I didn't think I'd be standing on this stage giving this speech in front of you. Don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely honored to be up here getting to speak alongside two of my best friends in the entire world. But it's not easy trying to write about being the voice for my entire generation when I, like so many of us, am still trying to find my own voice. We are the children of the internet, what society has titled the I generation. We are the generation that grew up in an era when everything rapidly became digital. The generation that learned to use PowerPoint and Microsoft Word before learning basic multiplication. The generation that forgoed cursive to practice keyboarding. And while the internet allows us the remarkable ability to instantly obtain information from anywhere in the world, social media has seeped into the everyday crevices of our life in negative ways, too. We are the I generation. The first generation to be judged, not by our character, but by the contents of our Facebook profile. Every day, we are compelled to compare our relentless problems to the seemingly flawless lives displayed on social media. Who here hasn't scrolled through the endless supply of beautiful people on Instagram and thought to themselves, why can't my life be as good as theirs? Why can't I be like them? Largely due to the internet, we are the generation which has experienced accelerated rates of loneliness, depression, bullying, and even suicide. Despite the new challenges the internet has given us, it has also provided us an unprecedented opportunity to make a difference, both here in Galax and on the world stage. As my colleagues spoke about how we've gleaned wisdom, experienced wonder, change, and growth, now is our time to broadcast our voices on a global scale. We are part of the I generation, and as we graduate high school today, we have the potential to change the world. A generation ago, the world's knowledge was locked inside hardback copies of encyclopedias, 
available from 8 to 5 in the local library. But now, almost any facet of the world can be brought to life with the touch of a hand. You see, something is happening right now that is completely unheard of in modern politics. Teenagers, young adults just like us, are using the benefits of the internet to raise their voices through social media. Five months ago, the survivors of Parkland realized that we can make a change, and they set a precedent for our generation all over the world to follow. Even if we don't agree on what has to change, I think we can ag all agree that something has to. So now is our chance to be part of the conversation instead of the subject of it. And since we're the generation who have grown up with the internet, we possess a unique skill set to utilize the internet that is unparalleled by other generations. Every single one of us with access to Wi-Fi has the chance to decide what kind of world in which we live. The challenges that face us have been made clear. But like other generations before us who have fought for change, we accept the challenge to prevail against the odds. We can be the generation that spreads hope and positivity instead of hate and resentment. We can be the generation that allows Americans to finally see each other not as political rivals, but as a single united force. So here's my challenge and best hopes of you graduating class of 2018. As we graduate high school today, we enter the real world. Everything we do from now on should be done with purpose. No matter what you're passionate about, whether it be saving the environment, bringing peace to the Middle East, uniting a country that's torn between red and blue, or solving the ever-increasing violence in schools, build a platform and use it to the absolute best of your abilities. None of this will be easy, but little of what we've experienced to date has been easy. We can be the generation that takes matter into our own hands, the generation that leaves the world a better place than we found it. Stand up, make a difference, have a voice. Thank you. Thank you. 
Row one, please rise. Arwa Ali. Emily Bionne Bautista Ledesma. Joseph Andrew Berry. Walker Gray Bobbitt. William Douglas Brannock. Christian Nolan Brown. Austin Seth Burnett. Catherine Mackenzie Butler. Samantha Carranza. Andrian Elaine Carrion. Hayden Grace Castle. Jasmine Desiree Schott. Erica Jaden Cooley. Jacob Trevon Cox. Landry Taylor Dalton. Row two, please rise. Lucas Garrett Dalton. Veronica De La Cruz Lopez. Carson Reed Delp. Brittany Lynn Dixon. Brittany Lynn Nicole Dow. Rachel Mayhow Edwards.
Jennifer Escobar Escavel. Betsabel Escavel Rojas. Aaron Mercedes Farlow. Nicole June Ferguson. Elijah Peyton Funk. Cruz Alejandro Garcia. Richard James Gentry. Tatiana Creche Gonzalez. Row three, please rise. Stephen Zane Goodman. Lakin Sierra Graham. Jackson Ryan Haga. Alexis Ryan Hill. Jetta Danielle Huffman. Noah Wesley Hutchins. Brooke Nicole Isom. Nathaniel Eldon Johnson. Andrew Jalen Jordan. John Gregory Key. Savannah Catherine Lumpkin. Skylar Megan Morgan. <laughs> Sierra Caitlin Nichols. <laughs> Eleanor Rose Ozer. Row four, please rise.
James Christian Parks. Madison Gray Parks. Tyler Eric Parks. Sina Balbant Patel. William Todd Patton. Robert Douglas Peoples. Alondra Michelle Ramirez Perez. Christopher Luke Reeves. Leva Salas Reynolds. Ethan James Robinson. Kaylee Jade Robinson. Veronica Robles Betancourt. Inma Yolani Rodriguez Rodriguez. Yakita Rodriguez. Elizabeth Rosales Marino. Cynthia Rosales Perez. Row five, please rise. Ella May Maud Shackelford. Krista Janelle Shaw. Maggie McLaughlin Shorter. Chase Malachi Smith. <laughs> Brett Michael Snow. Jacob Ryan Stewart. William Mackenzie Tabor. Kenzie Dale Tate.
Benjamin Patterson Whittle. Cassie Emmeline Widener. Hannah Faith Williams. Chadwick Logan Wilson. Tyler Blake Wilson. Sarah Jean Wyatt. Courtney Danielle Yeoman. Would the candidates for graduation please rise? <laughs> by the power vested in me by the Galax City School Board and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I now pronounce you to be graduates of Galax High School with all the rights and privileges therein. You may move your tassels. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2018. <laughs> 